Hi, and welcome to episode 76 of TLC Tech Learn Coffee. I'm a fifth grade teacher in South Monterey County here in California. Okay, and I'm Nancy, an instructional technology coach in Northwest LA County. And just as a reminder, we have a 15 minute format because ain't nobody got more time than that. No, they don't. And tonight's coffee fact is that other than crude oil, coffee is the world's most widely traded global commodity. And I'm not surprised about that because a lot of our machines run on oil, but a lot of our people run on coffee, <laughs> myself included. Um, so tonight's guest is James Allen, who is going to be talking to us about co-spaces. So James, tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do. Yeah, I am a school librarian in Kentucky, and I teach at Eminence Independent Schools. It's a we're a K through 12, kind of a one school district, kind of like a city school inside of a larger county. So we have about 800 kids, K through 12. So it's fun. We get to work with all of the age levels. So I, I like that part. We also have two librarians for our school, which is pretty crazy that we have so many for so few kids. I am so jealous. We do not have that in California. Okay. I know California's... Struggling a little bit on the teacher librarian side. Yes, like yes, we are. So your kids are really lucky to have you. Yeah. Uh, so tonight you're on to talk to us about co-spaces. So for those of us and our listeners who don't know what it is, what is co-spaces? It's, I'm sure the company could wrap it up in a couple sentences. It's, it has so much in it that it's kind of hard to describe all at once. Um, it keeps evolving. They keep adding features it allows you to create virtual reality worlds and that sounds simple, but you can also import your own audio, your own video, your own 360 photos, and then you can drag 3d objects into there. You can drag, you can upload 3d objects you've created in other software. Then if it wasn't that cool already, you can program all of the things that are in your world. So you can use code to make things move, make people talk. Basically, it's a digital storytelling platform that it's kind of open to whatever you can dream up. And then you can also project your creations in augmented reality, which is kind of use your phone and it looks like your world kind of pops up on your table, kind of like a Google Expedition type stuff. Oh, that is wonderful. So what platforms does this work on? Um... I haven't had an Android device. Well, I do. I mean, our kids have Chromebooks in uh, elementary school. So I guess they use that and it's, it's all web-based, but there is definitely an iOS app. I'm not, I'm not positive. There's an, I'm assuming there's an Android one also, but since I don't know, I, I don't use many Android phones or tablets. So I think they have one there for those too, but the app really works just like the website does. Um, but it's web-based. It kind of saves automatically as you go. You can assign group assignments and kids can actually work in these virtual reality worlds simultaneously, kind of like a, a Google Doc. So when one person makes a change, you see it pop up on the other screen. Oh, that's great. And it does that in real time? Yeah. Oh, that's very exciting. Yes. Because I love things like um, Google Tour Builder and um, Google VR Tour Creator, but they're not collaborative. Yeah. So you can, you can definitely use this tool like that. You can, uh, you can upload your own 360 photos and annotate things, animate things, put kind of text pop up type things in there. So that's exciting. So how much does this cost? I know there is a free version because that's kind of what I, I started out with a couple of years ago when it was newer. Um, it, I think it limits you. It kind of works like other platforms that are web-based. You know, you have like a kind of like Google Classroom. You have a, you're kind of like in teacher mode and you have, you add kids using a code. And I think the free version limits you on num the number of students you can have and then the number of assignments you can have. Um, our school actually purchased 400 seats and I don't want to quote like the price I, it's all on their website it's, it's pretty well laid out you can 
there's a few different tiers that you can use, but it, it's basically either the free version or you're paying for the seat. And by paying for the seat, you get more features inside of the, the tool. And that's pretty typical. And, you know, teachers can definitely go and try it out and see if they like yeah. it and see if they want to pay for it or hit their principal up to pay for it. Or Yeah. And I'm not somebody that, I mean, if, just because it's not free does not mean I don't take a look at it. Cause I mean, it's, you can tell there's a lot of work that's gone into this product and they, it keeps getting updated. They support it. It's, it's reliable. So, well, you know, it's not, uh, we can't expect everything to be free anymore. Yeah. I think um, we were spoiled at the beginning when it was pop, when people were letting you try things for free because they just wanted you to use their product. Yeah. But now I think a lot of good software and that has great applications isn't free. It might not be super expensive, but you know, they're doing a lot of work. I guess they feel like they should be making money and who can fault them. Yeah. Um, so tell us what, um, what are some classroom applications and what age students can use this app? Well, this is part of the cool part, I think. I mean, I would say I've, I've used it with second grade up, like second through even, you know, upper high school. Mm -hmm. So it's like for a beginner to kind of jump in and like do a few easy things, it's pretty easy. But with especially with the coding and the physics part that's built into the kind of back end of it, I mean, it can get really complicated, more complicated than I understand. So it's I, I like it that way because you can pretty much apply it to any content area. It's pretty open, you kind of similar to how, you know, you could take Minecraft or Bloxels or any of those other kind of sandboxy type apps to kind of fit whatever you're students are working on right it also has a it's kind of has a feel of google slides or keynote so these spaces that you create you can kind of create individual ones so that kind of you can chronologically go through a presentation and it it shares these separate spaces as as almost different well they're connected but you know what i mean like kind of the same way you would give a slide presentation so if you were creating, um, say you were studying ancient civilizations, you might do one with um, ancient Greece and another one with ancient Egypt or something like that where kids would travel from, actually wouldn't Egypt come first? Anyway, um, <laughs> you would go from one to the other to the next and kind of travel through these ancient lands. Yeah, and I'm lucky enough that I'm, I'm kind of teaching this not usually if it's middle or high school, I'm usually just kind of introducing it as an option for kids to use as a just to demonstrate their learning kind of a, usually at the end of a unit, kind of a project type thing. Mm -hmm. But with elementary, I teach in our related arts rotation and I'm basically just kind of introducing them to the tool. And I kind of open it up more to a, you know, we just talked about the parts of the story and how you have characters and there's a problem and there's, you know, just kind of like an, an arc to the story and then I kind of just let them go free with that and they kind of just create whatever whatever they want but that setting's a little less serious than their regular classroom so but they can take that knowledge back and then apply it to something later on that they're doing in their regular classrooms. So it's kind of introduced via a creative writing type prompt when you yeah, I think I think that's the easiest way to get into it because it's so uh, character driven. You you just basically drag people into your world, and then you can immediately start having them talk back and forth, or move, or animate, or. But it's it's really it's pretty wide open though. Well, it sounds really fun. Um, so, how have your uh, students and teachers responded to it? Do the do the teachers feel comfortable doing it in the classroom when you're not there? No, but <laughs> I, especially like with elementary, I'll introduce it one day where I probably spend about 20 minutes, maybe just going over like the basics, maybe not even that long. And Co-Spaces has some really good tutorials on YouTube that they've already created and spent time polishing. I like them because they're really short. They're like a minute or two minutes long and it kind of focuses on one tool. So sometimes I'll put those in and to break things up. 
uh, introduce them to some new features. But usually, you know, like a quarter pretty good at it very quickly and then they kind of become the experts and I let them kind of help everybody else along. Kind of frees me up to help kids who are having more technical difficulties. And then like with the older kids, once I get them started, especially since we've been one to one in our school for heck, I don't even know, five or six years maybe. So wow. they're, they're used to using tools like this, like Tinkercad is really similar. SketchUp's kind of similar. Like I was talking about like Google Slides and Keynote, that part of it's kind of similar. So it's nothing crazy brand new that they've not seen before. It's more of the just combining the things that they've already experienced. Like when we do Hour of Code, a lot of that's kind of that visual, you know, blockly looking type code. Right. So that's kind of how the code, the coding system works inside of code spaces. So they're used to that. So it's when they put all those things together, we don't have to spend a ton of time learning how to use it, which is also nice. And well, what's cool is that my kids, they find kind of, they find features before I do because they just keep looking around. And this girl today found a, in the code section, there was one where you can ask a question, like a quiz question, and have a right or wrong answer. And based on your answer, you can program your world to do whatever you want. So if the answer is correct, you know, you could have the person cheering. And if it's incorrect, you could have the person run away, like whatever you can dream up. And she showed that to me. It was She had almost made like her own choose your own adventure type story without me telling her to. I thought it was pretty cool. That is awesome. Well, I love the fact that you can have the kids kind of explore and figure it out. I mean, that's one of the ISTE standards too, isn't it? That kids take what they know about technology and apply it to other technology tools. So, you know, like how we know that, you know, there's the menu or the yeah. little mountain thing is a picture. So I think that it's, is the little it's mountain. It's helpful they haven't um, created like this weirdly unique thing either, right? So like the, you know, the controls yeah. kind of make sense and they're, they're not, you know, everything looks a little bit differently from software to software, but it, it it's basically, it's, it's really something you can kind of catch on to quickly. Right. Well, and it's, it's good that the kids, you know, feel comfortable doing that because then maybe you'll be able to work. Oh, I think that is my timer. Is that the timer? Yes, it is. And time flies when you're talking about co spaces. Right? <laughs> it's just like, but it's fascinating. I love it. And I can't, now I'm really excited. I'm going to wait and I'm going to get off of here and go on and check it out. Yeah. Um, so, any last thoughts? Any ideas? I know we talked earlier about sharing resources. Uh, will you have anything that we can link later for? in the show notes? Um, yeah, I'll try to grab some links to some things my kids have made. And then obviously just a, you know, a link to get you to, you can, it's obviously Googleable, the CoSpaces edu, but, and our kids use their Google account to log on. It works really easily. They just, it's, it's been seamless. I give them the class code. I don't even create the class before the kids show up. It works so quickly. So. Oh, that sounds great. Easy to use. We definitely love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about CoSpaces and getting me all excited about it. Um, and thank you to our okay. listeners. If uh, you enjoyed the show, and of course you did, please leave us a comment to let us know. And tonight's comment question is, how have you used AR or VR in your classroom? And how will CoSpaces fit in for you? So we hope to hear what you say about that. And uh, we invite everybody to join us on Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019, when our guest will be Becky Shorey. And she has student-led Chromebook repair teams that she's going to talk to us about. Wow. That's exciting. I'm really excited about the co-space. I did look at it a couple years ago, um, so now I'm all excited and I want to look at it again. Yeah, they've um, added tons of features. It's, it's really cool. That's awesome. So please don't forget to subscribe to hear more about the easy ways for you to innovate in your classroom. And if you like the show, and of course you do, 
Um, please feel free uh, to rate us and leave a review on iTunes, and that helps others to find us easier. Remember, we are always looking for guests to share the great things that they are doing in their classrooms. So if you know someone who fits the bill, or if you'd like to be a guest, please visit tlc.ninja and complete the contact form to let us know. Thanks, and we'll talk to you next time.